Welcome to Toffee TV. Today I am joined by John Solano from Roma Press, who's going to give us all of the details on the freaking group and uh, how it's been to be a Roma fan during their ownership of the club. John, welcome to Toffee TV. Thank you for having me. As I said before we got on, very excited to be on the Everton channels now after being browbeaten some years ago from the Liverpool ones. I'm glad to be on. I prefer this side more, I should say. Fantastic, fantastic. We hope to see a few Everton shirts in uh, in Rome in the future. Yes. But we'll, we'll wait and see. Um, listen, how how has this takeover news been received by by the Roma fans? Because we know we know the last few weeks has been a little bit unsettled. Let's just say <sighs> for Roma fans. So how has the takeover as a whole been been looked upon? Well, frankly, I believe the takeover has probably more positively been put secondary because of the chaos that has enveloped Roma early in this season and the way the timing has uh, flowed perfectly with the takeover, the Friedkin's takeover of Everton. You have the chaos at Roma, you have the takeover at Ever Everton ha happening simultaneously. And I think the latter was put more... Uh, on the back burner, so to speak. But uh, there haven't been any complaints. The, the complaints are more geared towards the freakings themselves. But as far as worry about this having some sort of uh, detriment to Roma, you really do not see much of that. It is probably for the first time, as you mentioned, the the first instance of some clashing between supporters and the freakings, but I, I think everything will be fine. It's um, they have done very well so far. And as I, as I'm confident you guys there will see very soon. It's uh, that they back up what they say. They put the, the money where their mouth is, so to speak. And this is, I think the first time really where they, they, have encountered a rough patch at Roma. I think they're handling it well, though. But, of course, we will see how the season plays out from here. Uh, obviously, I'm sure you guys are, again, well aware that the sacking of Dead All Sea, it created some tension with supporters. But, again, every it doesn't matter who the president or the ownership group is. I, all of them will experience something like this at some point. So I, I'm, I'm not too concerned. And, frankly, I don't think the takeover of Everton has ever been used as an alibi, so to speak, as why the season <laughs> might not be going so well at Roma and if it has any effect on the team at all. Yeah, because it, it is interesting because just listening to a few English outlets on um, this situation, some of them have maybe hinted at that, that, that this has added fuel to obviously what's ha been happening with with the Rossi and the CEO leaving, and that with with the yes. takeover, that some they believe that some Ra Roma fans were obviously not happy about this because they are worried that with Everton being a Premier League club, that some of the resources the the freaking group have will be put into Everton rather than Roma. Have you seen any evidence of that? None whatsoever, and. To be very frank, I've been shocked at the resources they've put into Roma to date. I I mean, I have been looking into the Friedkin group since 2019 when the, the first emerged that they were talking or wanting to acquire a football club. They actually looked in the first in the Premier League uh, before eventually settling and uh, finalizing an agreement for Roma. But, I mean, I have dug and went to lengths that I am not proud of just to get information on these guys because you will see very quickly they do not talk. They yeah. do not talk. Now, well, you know, in the Italian culture, uh, to some extent, perhaps that might be a bit more accepted when you have a president or an ownership group that is not too <laughs> for forward-facing, so to speak. They, you don't see them in front of the camera too much. You don't see them speaking to the newspapers. I believe they have done two to three comments officially in the four years, or j just slightly over four years since they have owned Roma. 
they they won't speak. So whether it's good, whether things are going good, whether they're going bad, whether they're going ugly, they are not going to speak. Now, as to whether or not you agree with that approach, the the fact of the matter is they stay very consistent. So I really don't think this period, which has been obviously very difficult at Roma, I wouldn't necessarily put all of it or even the majority of it uh, onto the shoulders of the freaking group. Obviously, at the end of the day, they will be the ones to answer. But I think Roma is such a particular and unique environment from the sense of you have expectations akin to Real Madrid, but you have a trophy cabinet, uh, uh, you know, that could fill up uh, one small shelf. So <laughs> there is no, there, there's no balance whatsoever. Yeah. When things go bad here, it's a disaster. When things go good, it's a para uh, parade. There's no in between. There's no nuance. Um, so I think that is something that they are going to have to get better at doing. And then I see much more sensibility and balance uh, really from any team uh, in the Premier League. I just don't think you have this this demand for perfection, yet having no reason to be asking for perfection to begin with. Uh, you, you just don't see this sort of behavior in Torino with Juve, in Milano. It's only in this place. Uh, maybe Napoli comes, uh, is maybe the only rival within the country that comes close to it. But this is a very unique environment. And I think anytime you speak of the Friedkins, and if you take issue with anything they've done, you almost have to factor that in to the discussion because this this, this is a much different place than, than other cities. Uh, football is felt here much more differently. Uh, again, for better or for worse, it's uh, it's it's just chaos all the time. It's never balanced or nuanced. So, I I really do not think that if you are from the outside looking in and you are trying to gauge whether. Uh, you know, the Friedkins seeing how they are oper operating with Roma, how that could impact uh, Everton. I, I I really wouldn't take much credence or mm. I, I wouldn't give much weight to it because uh, if it was not Roma, uh, Lina Suluku would still be there, the CEO who, was, uh, who resigned last month. Uh, she would still be there. Um, it is a very particular place that, frankly, I, I, I think the Friedkins are going to welcome uh, bringing everything on and perhaps being able to be there a bit more than they are at Roma. I mean, they do come to matches a lot, but I, if I were an Everton supporter, I wouldn't worry whatsoever. Um, this is just such a unique place that uh, you, you can't really ask for sense or calm when it comes to anything pertaining to Roma. It's interesting to listen to you there, John, because there'll be a lot of Everton fans nodding and thinking this is exactly how it is at Everton I mean I don't think we have the same it, 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 I genuinely we we do, I mean we listen we're not the Italian way of doing things in football is a little bit different than the English way we have been we have been sort of the last 30 years of the Premier League era we've been um, you know uh, gentrified in many ways from what it was before that but but Everton fans are very similar to what you've been just talking about we we, are, we demand and, and you know very similar to the Roma fans and, and we're the only difference is we have a neighbour who obviously goes and gets those trophies that we yes. want, and that makes it even worse for us than a lot of other clubs because we can see a rival who is getting the things that we want, we demand, and so I do see a lot of similarities between the two clubs in that in that nature. Um, it's certainly online. If you ever if you ever fall into Everton Twitter, you will see. You know, we are any manager or any player is either three games from greatness or three games from, you know, the sack. Um so there are there are similarities there. Um yes. so so it's good that they've already got that unique experience. So uh which is into so what I mean what what you know you you mentioned there the the freak you believe have probably done a good job. So you know how how have they done a good job and how have they changed the, the club? Well I think first and foremost the money. Yeah. They have put in just obscene amounts of cash into Roma. Now, Roma used to be publicly traded up until about a year ago, and we were able to get full breakdowns of the 
where the money was going, how much they actually put in, and beyond what they paid for the club, it's it's crazy to me because unlike the Premier League in Italian football, I just don't. It's difficult to see where the value is or where you can make the money with the Premier League, the the rights of media. Serie A can only wish to be there within the next decade or so. I cannot comprehend, and I again the lengths I have gone to be able to track the freakings, uh, you know, like calling private airports and talking to employees there just to get the numbers of their private jets. I, I mean, I have gone to embarrassing lengths <laughs> just to be able to write down these guys and find out more because again they do not talk; they won't talk to anybody. Um, they have held this approach of just shutting up. They don't speak in Italian football. Yes, uh, you you have one end or the other where you have the president who does not say anything, or you have uh, every, you know people are used to the likes of Berlusconi, who mm-hmm. who is a, a character, a part of a part of the club itself, a, a part of the play, so to speak. It, it, you are not going to see that with them. Yeah. And they have taken this very corporate approach yeah. that you you just do not see in Serie A. The only team that has anything, I, I think, remotely resembling a corporate approach is Juve. And even they have, you know, uh, their executives, they will... Uh, they've had many wacky characters themselves, so to speak, and they're out doing interviews or on television. With them, they do not say a thing. And I think in a place like Roma, uh, when it's going good, that's a great thing. When it's going bad, as we've seen in the early parts of uh, this season, that that can be detrimental to your standing within the supportership and the fan base. But I think beyond the cash and this mm, more professional approach, I mean, the absolute commitment they have showed, not only with it, the money and putting it into transfers again. I mean, this was a Roma that was on financial fair play. They still are under the um, under the watch of financial fair play, but they have been very committed on the market with players, uh, replacing ones if a, an important player wants to leave. They replace, uh, they bring in another big name. I, I mean, you can't help but applaud their approach in that because, again, I, I just there's very little value in Italian football. Mm. But beyond the market, I mean, they are working to get a stadium. Obviously, with Everton there, I, I have to imagine that played a very large part of their uh, interest in the club because they are seeing what. Uh, not only owning your own stadium, but a modern stadium. You go to the Olimpico. Sure, many of your uh, viewers have gone to Rome as a tourist. The stadium, it it sucks. It sucks. Um, they don't own it. Yeah. So they have to pay. Um, they are limited in what they are able to do. They share it with not only Lazio, but there's rugby matches played on it, and the pitch is just horrendous. The viewing experience is not that great. So Roma have been trying to get a new stadium since 2013. They officially mm-hmm. unveiled the project and not a single shovel has been thrust into the ground. Um, but they have made more headway in these last uh, two to three years, I would say, than the previous regime did in the prior six to seven. Yeah. So they are very committed to not only on the pitch, but off the pitch as well. Now, I think there are some business reasons behind that, because if you look into the Freakins, they have uh, business interests, uh, hospitality, so hotels, uh, tourism. So you can see, obviously, why they would be interested in building up a stadium. But who, if they have to make money on it, too, from a business perspective, I, I think everybody would be okay with it because of how long it is taking to get this project done. So they have been committed uh, from day one. I don't think anybody can question uh, their not only their commitment, but their eagerness to see Roma thrive on and off the pitch. And if they see something going wrong, they are willing to change it. Um, have they made mistakes? Of course. Uh, I don't 
I think looking at the situation as we stand, but they go back in time and uh, give Daniele Terossi three years of a contract uh, just some year or just some months ago, only to sack him uh, in September. Probably not, but still, they are they are learning. They are going to make mistakes. We have to accept that. But mm. uh, the commitment they have shown they they have put their money where their mouth is. They have never wavered and. If you find the Roma supporter that is upset with the Friedkin group, I I doubt it would be in regards to money, to to transfers. It could be in regards to Jose Mourinho, Daniel Eterossi, mm. coaching, it, something in that regard. But, I mean, just from top to bottom, you look at everything they've done since they, since they have arrived at Roma, you, you, you can't question it. You, you cannot question it. Yeah, and, and of course, both stadiums designed by Dan Mice as well. So, um, and yeah, it, it looks a fantastic stadium. I hope one day you 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 get to obviously be there in real life, like we are going to be uh, obviously next season. Um, yes. Let me just ask you about obviously uh, Lena Saluku, um, the CEO, obviously who's just left Roma. There's a lot of talk that she will be coming in to be. Possibly Evans, new CEO. I mean, what what are your thoughts on the job she did? So she was very interesting, her trajectory, because she was not at Roma very long. I think she arrived in April of 2023. So she was not, I mean, not in that role particularly long. Her time was interesting because she arrives at Roma and they name her CEO. She has history at uh, Olympiacos, so very highly regarded. And in their original press release, they make it clear that she will be overseeing primarily things off of the pitch, including the stadium. Uh, however, come December, January, when Roma announced that Tiago Pinto, the former uh, tech or sporting director of the club was going to be leaving uh he was the one when they announced him he, they made it explicitly clear that he would be the one overseeing sporting and on pitch matters i think her downfall within roma came to when tiago pinto leaves in J- er, at the end of january this past january and she uh begins to attain very quickly and i wrote something about this uh, the 1st of March I published something because you could see she was starting to gain more influence uh, not only with off the pitch matters but now on the pitch. She she was becoming more involved with um, uh, player selection. She was becoming more involved um, she was the face at the UEFA, uh, UEFA draws. She would be doing interviews uh, prior to matches as well. So if if she is going to go to Everton, I have to imagine with the Friedkins, they learn from the mistakes and they try to keep her in a role that has very little interaction or very little effect on the on-pitch matters. If, if you bring her in for, for simply business-related things, I, I think she could do very well. Um, I think the trouble came when Daniele Terossi he replaces Jose Mourinho in mid-January while Tiago Pinto is still there. So she had no impact or no say on the appointment of De Rossi. And she had very little input as to giving him a new contract in June. The, the club was always going to do that. And I think given that, I think perhaps she maybe overplayed her hand, so to speak, in the sense of she wanted to be able to pick a new manager and she perhaps found the first opening in her mind that she viewed as an opportunity to do so doing that just a few matches into the season i don't think any rational person would agree with the timing being correct but in her mind i think she viewed it as the correct approach and i don't think she would have expected the response that the supporters gave to her which I was, I will say, in some sense, justified that it is four matches, but I, I also think things were taken a bit too far, as they typically do in this place. <laughs> um, 
but I, I think that much like the Freightkins, this is a, an environment that perhaps she didn't fully understand. And there was no understanding of the intensity of the backlash for a decision. And I think she was very naive to that. I think she could do it very well if she goes to Everton his name CEO. Um, yeah. Even if she does have minor, uh, a minor influence on the on-the-pitch matters, as long as I think there is somebody on the technical side mm. who is there to oversee things and lead things, I, I don't think her having input uh, is necessarily a bad thing. But I think when she is uh, sort of the focal point or she is the one making a final decision mm. because Roma went five to six months without a replacement for Tiago Pinto. So it, it was it was her running things completely. I think perhaps that may have been a, been a bit too much for her. Yeah. Uh, so... I think she clearly learned. Yeah, I'm sure if she could go back in time even too, she would handle things a bit differently with the Dorossi decision. Um, but I don't have any... There was nothing I saw that would lead me to believe this is somebody who does not understand what she is doing, somebody who is uh, incapable. It was a learning experience for her as it was the Friedkin. So I, there is nothing which she showed to us during her time albeit the brief that would worry me whatsoever nothing major at all I, I just think this is again a very particular place and perhaps she downplayed that yeah well I mean Everton do have a, a director of football in place and, and Everton have been in the last few years uh, there's been uh, you know similar people at our club that, who have got far too far too involved in things that they shouldn't be involved in so hopefully lessons have been learned from from uh from roma and from everton when it comes to that so um if she is if she is uh given the ceo job then i'm sure she'll do a, a, a great job from what you've been saying there and um, just just finally because you've been very generous with your time already but i just wanted to ask you on this obviously it you know if the deal goes through uh and it does become both clubs and with them owning a club in France as well, you know the the multi club system. I know they they've they've sort of alluded it won't be a multi club system, but how do you see that working with two big clubs? I I, I regard both both clubs as big clubs. Um, yeah. and you know the 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 sharing of the wealth and obviously the fans. You know, do you see this as them being run individually because? Let's be honest, Roma fans are not going to be happy being secondary to Everton and Everton fans are not going to be secondary to, to Roma because at the end of the day, we love our clubs. We want our clubs to be the number one thing, the number one priority for whoever owns them. So how do you see that working? I, I really do not think it is going to be an issue. I, I, I really don't. This is, in fairness, some uncharted territory, so to speak. Of course, you have 777, who have a variety of clubs, um, I would say many of the supporters of these clubs, though, are not exactly uh, uh, thrilled mm. with the jobs that they have done at their respective uh, places thus far. Um, I mean, the group that a uh, city group, perhaps we could see with them, they own uh, Palermo mm. in Serie B right now. Uh, if they were to get promoted to Serie A, Perhaps we were able to get some sort of sense as to how uh, this multi-club system with, uh, you know, top-tier clubs works. Yeah, of course. Roma, Everton, uh, much different than Manchester City and Palermo. But I don't think it is going to be an issue. But I do think they are going to be run independently. I think they're going to give the same amount of vast resources to Everton as they do to Roma. I don't think... Uh, they're going to be taking from one pot and moving it to another. This is, again, if you just look into them and you try to study the Friedkin group, the vast amount of wealth, I, I, I have tried to make sense of it because the amount of cash they have thrown into Roma, which at, at many times when it comes to Italian football, you are better off just setting the money aflame because nothing, <laughs> you're not going to get anything for it. Yeah. But to see the amount that they have put into it, I've tried to make sense as to, wow, how how are they able to do this? This, I mean, this is a, a huge, um, I, I, I think now we, we were probably eclipsed half a billion euros. Yes, but like, it's not the amount of cash and the resources that they have. 
So I don't think it's going to be taken from the path of Roma, putting it to into the one of Everton or vice versa. I don't think it's going to be that at all. I think this is, uh, I, I hate to put it so elementary, but no, I, I just think this is a guy with a, just a mad amount of money. <laughs> he wants to play some football manager in real life, so to speak. Now, yeah. that is a bit crass in the way I describe it, but um, he has run things professionally. He has not been this sort of, uh, you know, bombastic personality out there saying, I want this player. I expect, uh, you know, this club to do this and do that. Um, I can't imagine that he turns into this uh, this very talkative guy just because now he has a Premier League club, he has a Serie A club, and perhaps he has more uh, name recognition. I think what we will see, and I have reiterated the stats above all, if you want to sort of get into the head of Dan Friedkin, I, he is now on the board of the European Club Association, which is it has significant influence when it comes to uh, football, uh, when it comes to having the ear of UEFA. Uh, I mean, he's on, alongside you know the president of the PSG on this board. This is this is somebody who is clearly working to. Uh, gain influence within within the sport uh, to be able to not only influence Roma now, but obviously Everton. And I think he's doing so uh, so that his clubs benefit. I don't imagine that. I, I can't imagine in the near future he's going to attain a third club. Um, again, he always wanted to be in the Premier League, and now that is uh, appears to be coming a reality. I think this is somebody who as much as I've tried to understand how they are able to attain such wealth consistently year over year, even during the pandemic, everybody talks of uh, how much money he earns in the auto industry hmm. or hospitality. And you think to yourself, okay, well, even during the COVID uh, pandemic and, you know, these uh, areas of business fa uh, significantly impacted to their detriment, yet he's still able to just attain and throw in cash and millions and millions of euros into Roma. I've just stopped questioning it. I, <laughs> at this point, well, who, who cares? You know, yeah. He's not taking the money out of uh, my coffer, so to speak. Yeah. So wh wh why question it or why try to make sense of it? Clearly, this is a guy who wants uh, wants to be involved in the sport, who wants to bring his family into it. Obviously, you see his son, Ryan Freakin, he's a vice president, but you also see uh, his younger sons attend the matches of Roma quite often. It's a, pretty, uh, a wealthy guy wanted to bring uh, his wealth and his family into the sport, um, but he's not doing it in this uh, irresponsible way. He's doing it very measured. He's doing it professionally. And again, I, I, I think just the fact he moved to get onto the board of the ECA, I think is very important and is a very clear signal of his intent that um, he is going to be involved in the sport for a long time. Uh, and he wants to be influenced, uh, or I'm sorry, he wants to be influential within the sport. He wants to have a voice. He he wants to be able to uh, work to the benefit of his club. So um, I am not worried about, uh, you know, Everton being, uh, if Roma have to copy the way Everton are doing things or vice versa. I think these are going to be uh, two independently run clubs and it's sure they can take some things that they learned at Rome and implement it at Everton. But I, I think they would be mad to, you know, do an exact uh, copy and paste because, I mean, just the stadium, the stadium portion itself. I mean, the Italian bureaucracy. It, it, <laughs> I, I could spend hours on here. I mean, yeah. just some of the laughable things that have held up the stadium of Rome. Uh, there's a environmental groups that put, uh, there was a report of some species of frogs where Roma are going to dig. Uh, for the stadium, and now we can't dig there because this uh, this very specific uh, species of frogs. I mean, it's laugh. It, it, it's the Italian bureaucracy is laughable. They, I just don't think you're going to see or encounter things like that with Everton. So, I, uh, frankly, I, I think they'll be able to run Everton <laughs> much better sooner than they than they did Roma yeah. because I, I mean they have been uh, trial tested at yeah. Roma. So. I just think they'll be able to hit the ground running much, much more quickly because of the many lessons they have learned um, having been within Serie A for four years now. They've, 
they've learned a lot and I just don't think they'll encounter those uh, the uh, comedic hiccups so to speak that they had to encounter in this country well we we did actually have to lose our uh world heritage status in the city of Liverpool to build our stadium so we uh, we we feel your pain but I imagine having been to Rome as well that you know every time you put a spade in the ground in Rome you you never know what you're digging up so I can I can fully yeah. understand the issues there but John it's been absolutely brilliant speaking to you and I really do hope that uh, our two clubs can get you know some kind of alignment where we both become absolutely su- successful because uh listen I, I Totty is listening. He's just like one of my footballing idols. What a, what a mm. what a man! What a player! And he's drawn drawn me towards uh, Roma as a club because he's just amazing. And I, I hope to see one day, you know, Roma uh, Totty back at Roma having some kind of influence and and hopefully, uh, you know, us having some nice friendlies over in the states or something yeah. or somewhere really nice and warm because we because it yeah. doesn't it was fantastic to welcome Roma here in the summer it was just really disappointing that it was in the um the bit in the middle where obviously the freakins had gone away right. it, was, it was really disappointing but it's been absolutely fantastic speaking to you where can people find you uh at is roma press all of the stories all the things we write you can find it there and i just want to reiterate i I'm so much looking forward to this after being beaten and beaten down by the Liverpool supporters, <laughs> having to speak about Salah, Alisson. I much prefer this. So I hope we get to do this more often. You've you've made yourself an instance hero here amongst <laughs> Evertonians. So thank you very much. Thank you for having me. There you go. Thank you to John. Absolutely fantastic listening to him on the Freakins. And yeah, seems very, very positive. Make sure to check out it all his stuff over on Roma Press. Make sure to give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't already. If you want more great videos, join us over on Toffee TV Premier. The link is in the description. The QR code's going on the screen now. See you later.